Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today we'll be having a look at the completed entries for the Vintage Kits group build which has just recently ended on my Discord server. The name kind of speaks for itself really, but the basic idea for that group build was that the entries were to use kits released before 1990. Simple enough, right? We'll talk about the next group build later. Let's have a look at the entries. First up, we have Fessor 2000's entry. This is a V2 rocket from Ravel, and it was originally manufactured in 1962. Fessor says that this one didn't quite go as planned. The internals went okay, assembly and painting were quite easy there. The outside of the rocket though, there might have been some residue of something on the outside, and the paint just wouldn't stick. Fessor applied two layers of grey primer and three layers of green, and it's still a bit spotty. It was decided that further layers of paint wouldn't do much, and therefore the model was completed. I can certainly see what you mean, it's not a perfectly opaque paint job, but I don't think it looks bad. Fessor also apologised about the vertical pictures, the model does kind of lend itself to that. I still rotated them anyway, as you can probably tell, just so that it would be a reasonable size in the frame. I do like the cutaway so that you can see the internals on this kit, I think that's quite interesting. Next up, we have this ship from Graf Pudding, specifically the King George V. This is a 700th scale Tamiya kit from 1975, and I think it's a quite nice model. I'm sure it's not quite as detailed as the modern equivalent, I'm assuming there is a modern equivalent, but it does look good, and Graf Pudding has painted it quite well. Unfortunately, there wasn't any information other than the basics. I would have liked to hear about any issues encountered in the build or any positives or whatever. That's okay though, I'm impressed to see such good results from an old kit, though I do suspect the good paint job is doing a lot of the work. Lutantin's entry is this French Char B1B? Bis? B? I don't know. It's a 76th scale Matchbox slash Ravel kit from 1983. Lutantin says, You may notice this tank's turret is missing. That's because I used it in a previous group build. So, a way around that had to be found. Lutantin was going to model this as a destroyed vehicle, but was informed that there were actually Shah B1s without turrets, known as Shah B1B number 505. This is also the second time Lutantin has painted a figure. Both the tank and the figure are painted really nicely, and I quite like the flag over the turret hole. It's a pretty good way to hide it without having to model whatever modifications the real thing had. Good work. Major General Bunk's entry is a Panzer 75 assault gun or Stug, which has a very nice muddy bottom. This is a 76th scale Airfix kit from 1962. Bunk says that he found the kit surprisingly fun to build, even when it really shows its age, and that's really good to hear. This was also an experiment in creating mud effects using Vallejo's texture paint. Bunk says that he'll definitely use this in future projects, and I can see why. It looks quite effective. Bunk describes this as a stylistically anachronistic interpretation of a winter camouflaged, grey clad, skull adorned assault gun on the Russian front circa 1942. I think it's really well done. Monol's entry is, I think, an interesting take. It's an M46 pattern painted in an army men style. This is a 48th scale kit from Atlantis from 1956, making it the oldest kit we've seen so far. The kit is actually a 2019 rebox of an old Aurora kit. Monol says you can't tell it's from 2019 because it's a terrible quality reproduction of the original. He also says the rubber band tracks were, for once, not the worst feature of a model kit. And I've got to say, I'm kind of shocked. That must have been a pretty bad kit. Assembly did involve a little bit of swearing, and there was a few close calls where the model was almost thrown against a wall. Monol is strong and resisted. When it came time to paint the tank, Monol was at a crossroad. Paint the model as realistic as possible, or use the limited detail and toy-like appearance to his advantage and make something silly. And obviously, the choice was silly, which pleases me. Most of the inspiration for this came from the old PlayStation 1 game Army Men Air Attack. I think I remember that one. Riot Nerd submitted this M4A3 E8 Sherman. This is a 72nd scale kit by Hasegawa, dating back to 1974. 
there was no further information given, but I think it's been painted rather nicely. Sanvi's entry is this F-14A. This is a Ravel 72nd scale kit from 1987, making it one of the more recent kits in this group build. Again, there was no further information provided, but this looks pretty decent. I like the colours that were used, though I've no idea which air force this plane represents. Next up, we have Samoa's entry, which won't stop looking at me. This is an LTVAP7 ROK, or ROK. It's an academy kit in 35th scale from 1980X. Wait, X isn't a number. It is in Roman numerals. <sighs> I'm just assuming in this case that it means sometime in the 80s, but the specific year is unknown. Samua said this was a fun and fast model to build, and said patience was learned, as was how decals can be terrifyingly hard. You're not wrong there. Samua does feel they could have done a better job with the decals, and well, that's usually the case, isn't it? You've done these and they don't look too bad, and you'll do better next time. That's usually how it works. Anyway. This is a pretty cool looking model of what I think is an odd looking vehicle. Definitely worth the time you've taken. And finally, we have an entry from Trekan Belovich. This is a MiG-23 Flogger, which I think is a pretty silly name, though not in a bad way. The kit is in 144th scale from Hobbycraft slash Academy, originally manufactured in 1980X, again. This is painted up rather nicely and has the insignias of the East German Army. The insignias on the wings should be rectangular, but Trekan used what he had, which makes a lot of sense to me. Very nice work as always. And that's all of the entries for this group build. Pretty good turnout this time, I think. I've really enjoyed seeing all of these entries, and it's cool to see such good looking models come from old kits. And while it's not really fair to say that all old kits are bad, they are often not quite so good and this just proves that you can still make something good from them. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there will be another group build, however, not right away. First, a topic must be chosen. If you've got an idea you'd like to suggest for a group build topic, now would be the time to do so, over on Discord, not here. The link for Discord is in the description below, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding the group build section. Go make a suggestion, and in a short while, they'll be voting for which topic is chosen, and once that's been determined, another group build will start. Such is the circle of life of the group build, or something. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the group build entries as much as I did. I thought this topic was a good, interesting one, and I'm glad whoever thought of it did. That's it for today. I'll be back sometime soon, so in the meantime, take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.